What is up guys? Today we're going to be editing this portrait that my friend took while I was in New York. Now, what's special about this editing process is it's really going to be focusing on maintaining the textures in the skin while smoothing out the other imbalances like light and color imbalances. This technique is uh, something that I've learned and adapted through a whole bunch of different techniques over the years. and. Uh, it is a little bit more involved. It does take a little bit more time to do, but if you have a portrait that you think is a really good shot and you really actually wanna spend the time to make that portrait as good as possible, I highly recommend using this technique. Now, I'm not gonna be going over too much of how the Lightroom settings go on this, as in like the highlights, shadows, you know, changing the colors and all that. Uh, I'm going to be using my presets, which I use for all of my photos. So if you want to edit along, I've dropped in the description below the raw image so you can download it if you don't have one of your own that you want to work on and a link to my presets if you want to go ahead and purchase them. If you don't, that's totally fine. This video isn't here to push my presets. Then you're just going to have to be doing your own color adjustments. But the actual substance of this video, which is maintaining skin texture while smoothing everything out, that doesn't change. All right, let's get right into it. Here is the original raw file straight out of camera. It was shot at, on a 50 millimeter 1.8, one over 60 seconds, which is about the slowest shutter speed you can get for that millimeter. A good rule of thumb is don't go slower, don't have your shutter speed slower than one over your focal length. So for this, just in general, don't go, slower than one over 50. If you had a 200 millimeter lens, don't go slower than one over 200. That's just kind of a good rule of thumb to make sure you don't get camera shake in your images. Now, it was shot at 1.8, so you're gonna have a nice bokeh in the background and really good for portraits, keep the, the subject in focus and the background out of focus. Now, unfortunately, the camera did miss perfect focus on the eyes. It kind of focused a little bit forward on the nose and cheeks there, but that is okay for the, the purposes of this photo, which will be the final kind of outcome of this is gonna be for Instagram. So it doesn't really need to be tack sharp and we can bring some of that sharpness back later in, in post. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply one of my presets. Now I'm just doing this because it saves a whole lot of time and I use my presets on all of my photos when I edit, there are little formulas that I came up with, and it's for me, I don't see the, the use in reinventing the wheel. So what I'm gonna put on here is the F for F, follow for follow. By the way, all my preset names are named after ridiculous Instagram lingo. So that's why you're seeing all these weird names here. So follow for follow is a really good one to start with. Uh, it really brings a dull image. It, it pops it a little bit more. It keeps the colors a little bit more natural. I use that preset a lot when I just want kind of a natural pop to my photos. All right, that is a good place to start to kind of get some color editing going. We're also going to come down here and remove the grain that was applied uh, in this because later we'll apply the grain. All right, now we can bring it into Photoshop and we can start the skin smoothing process. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is Command J to duplicate the layer. It means that we're gonna keep the background layer, the original. It's always good to have that original to always have a reference. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just quickly take care of the bigger blemishes. And so by that, we're just gonna go over here and do the healing brush and just don't use this to, to correct all the blemishes, but just the bigger ones. Uh, it does really affect the skin tone. It really smooths it out. So you don't want to overuse it, but just some of the bigger ones, uh, it's kind of good to get rid of those really easily and quickly. All right, that's great. Now we can go to the next step, which is to create a frequency separation layer. What a frequency separation layer is, is basically that you're separating the finer texture from the larger variations in a photo. You'll see what I mean in a second here. So we're going to duplicate that layer again, come down, take this layer, and apply a Gaussian blur. So let's zoom in first so we just see what the Gaussian blur is gonna do. We apply filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're gonna choose a radius that we can see that it's going, like we're gonna choose a radius where you stop seeing the texture of the skin, but not so high that it just gets to nothing. And by that, I mean, here's nothing. And by that, and it's gonna be different from every photo depending on how many megapixels your camera is, how close the subject is. So 
I'm going to probably go around, around here, 2.7. Uh, that works for this photo. The next thing we're going to do is take this above layer, go to image, apply image, layer, we're going to apply it to the layer below. So we're applying this top image to the bottom one, the blending mode to subtract, scale to two, offset to 128. These settings are for raw uh, if you're working in 16-bit, which if you're shooting RAW, it should be in 16-bit. If you're shooting JPEG, then these settings will be different, and that's something that you're going to have to Google. But this is a little bit of tough love. If you're not shooting RAW, you should be shooting RAW, and it should be in 16-bit. Okay, so now this looks like just a gray weird layer, but what we're going to do here is go down and apply this as a linear light to the one below. Now it just looks like kind of back where we're started. But the only difference is that now we have the texture layer up here and a tonal layer below. This allows us to work on the tonal layer without affecting the texture. So let's take that out just for now. And what we're going to do now is start smoothing out the blemishes. You can see there's just unevenness in the skin tones. And we're going to do that in a very manual way, very tedious. But once you get the hang of it, uh, it goes quite quickly. So we're going to do a layer, make it dark, do the layer mask, and paint it black. Then we're going to duplicate that. And this layer, we're going to go light. So this one, we can name uh, light texture. And this one, we can name dark texture. And then the next thing we're going to do, and the next two layers are going to be identifier layers. They're going to make the, the photo look terrible, but that's the point. And we're not going to use them in our final output, but we're just going to keep them here to help us identify the problem areas. So we'll up the contrast like that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we'll take a hue and saturation layer and down the saturation. So now we've got a high contrast layer, which really exaggerates the, the blemishes. And we've taken out all the colors, so the color isn't distracting us. Now we can just work on straight black and white. So in order to do this, it's going to take uh, quite a bit of painting. We'll, we'll go to the light texture here. Press B. That's the shortcut for the brush. Come bring a nice soft brush around 35. Opacity, depending on how strong your curve is, but I usually go around between 4 and 8% opacity on my brush. And I just come through here and I just start painting with white. So painting with white over the layer mask so it exposes the actual uh, curve and for this one is light. So it's, this one's going to be brightening up dark places. And then if you have a light place and you want to darken it to match the tones around it, you do the same. You just grab the dark texture and do the tone around it. Now I'm going to speed up this video a little bit because now it's just basically the same thing. We're just going to go through and paint through all this area and, and try and even it out. So after about 15 minutes, your portrait should look something like this. This is the before, that is after. Definitely looking a lot smoother. Let's even see what it looks like just back to our normal without the identifier layers there. So that was before and that's after. So like when you're in zoomed in and actually doing the light painting, it doesn't seem like you're making a lot of difference, but then when you zoom out and actually unmask and, or uh, unshow and reshow these layers, then it really starts to pop on exactly what's going on. Now, this is great for getting the skin tones nice or the skin textures nice and smooth. The next thing we have to do is, is smooth out some of the lighting by light painting. You see, so we, we got rid of like the imperfections in the skin and on a micro level, but now there's shading imperfections. And, and by that, I mean like this area here is a lot brighter and this area. So there isn't like a smooth transition from light to dark. So what we'll do now is, is we're gonna apply the same technique, but we're gonna use larger brushes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is the same thing, a dark layer like this, make it black, light layer, make it bright. This one will be light paint 
plus and light paint minus. And we're just gonna do the same thing just with larger brushes. So what we can see is just larger patchiness. This could brighten up, this could brighten up on the brow, this could darken in here, this can darken here, and this can smooth out between when it gets dark to light again, and here it can smooth out. So I'll start to show you what that looks like, and then again, I will just speed up the process because uh, you, don't, you don't need to see a 15 minute video of this happening. That's even too strong. Let's do a 4% brush and start working on the bags here. And these guys, and what we can do is we can even change our identifier layer, the contrast. We can even make it slightly darker. There we go. That might help us a little bit more in seeing where we need to even things out. You can probably lighten this. All right, so that's what we did there. See how it smoothed out some of the, the lighting on the face? All right, now we can get back to our original and let's reapply our texture layer. And now we're back with smooth skin and texture intact. And actually we can, let's remove that guy there. Oop. You see how it really destroys the texture when you use that tool, but such a small spot we can we can get away with that all right all right all right so that's pretty much for the skinning of, that's pretty much for the smoothing of the skin now let's even out the skin tones a little bit before we pull it back into Lightroom and by that I mean here you see that it's a little red a little magenta and purple here and what we really want is the whole thing to be more blue uh, more orange so we'll go down to the red channel and again we're going to use this as an identifier so we crank it up and now we can really see or we could even change the hue to something ridiculous and then we can really see what's being affected uh, so now pretty much everything in the red channel is being affected it's way too general what we want to concentrate on was those areas that were red and magenta so what we do is we take this slider here and this is tells it what color range to affect and we want to affect more of the reds and the magentas and less of the oranges and the yellows so the less we affect the oranges and the yellows the more we see that this returns to normal and now we can really see exactly where we're affecting and we want to keep refining that until we're right in the area we want to be so let's take that up Okay, yeah, we see now the area, and that was pretty much where we identified. That's around this area and under the eyes, and we see that's pretty much where this is affecting, and it's really, really gross, yeah. So that's the spots that, that's kind of the skin tone that's a little too red, a little too magenta, and really easy fix for that is take the saturation down to zero and change the hue. Now we can change the hue of it over to a more yellow green and eventually it gets way too much, but we want to go subtly with this. It's more around 11 like that. It's, it's really hard to see, but trust me, it is making a difference on there. And zoom out. All right, then the last thing we can do just to touch up it, for this layer is at least exclude the lips because, well, lips are usually kind of red, so we don't want them we want to preserve as much red in them as possible. The next thing we do is work with the texture. Let's add in some more texture around the skin. The, the texture that we lost by the camera being out of focus, there should be some pores here and we can really exaggerate a little bit of the, the, the skin texture pores everywhere else. So this layer right here is a fantastic layer because it just contains details. So if we duplicate it, we see that it really, really exaggerates the pores and the details. A little bit too much, but we do want to we do want to emphasize it a little bit. So we will take a layer, add a black layer mask, duplicate the layer, add a black layer mask. Oh, I'm just stumbling on my words right now. Take a 20% opacity brush, and we can come in here and exaggerate these guys just a little bit. 
It's also great for sh general sharpening. So what do you want sharp? You kind of want the eyes sharp, the eyebrows. Yeah, the eyes and the eyebrows, the nose, the lips. Uh, maybe even a little bit the hair. Just sharpen it up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And then, so that's just to, to exaggerate the sharpness of what's there. Even out here, we could exaggerate that. But now if we want to add a little bit of skin texture out here, we can steal some of this skin texture and put it here and do that really easily like this. We duplicate it and then we move the entire layer and you can see these spots here are moving from where they were to up here. Then we just simply take the entire layer and make it black so nothing is showing. And then we just expose the pores that are here. And there we go. Add a little bit, not too much, a little bit down there. And there we go. I think we are done in Photoshop. We can pull it into Lightroom and continue our work there. Really quick, I'll just show you what we did. This was how we started and this is how we ended. Subtle, but definitely a big difference. Let me do that again. Before and then after. Subtlety is the name of the game, but also makes a huge difference. All right, so now let's pop over to Lightroom. And this is our shot that we just pulled in. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a second preset onto our first one. If you take a preset and you apply it and then pull it into Photoshop and do some work, and then pull it back into Lightroom and you apply another preset, you are essentially double applying presets. And I do that sometimes if I really wanna emphasize something in a photo, if I really want uh, my photo to pop. It can very, very often be way too harsh and I oftentimes have to take down or, or make the second preset a lot less intense, but it, it tends to work very, very well. So I'll come over here and I'll put the this, this being the name of the preset, and apply it and it adds really a nice rich contrast to it but of course it is also a little bit too intense so i think what we're going to do is we'll come through here and we'll probably up the highlights a little bit generally it's a little too bright so we'll also make it darker uh, this is a picture of, of a dude me and and uh it works generally it works better to have Photos slightly darker if you're if you're working with men, just because uh, it's more it's a little bit more masculine that way. Uh, we can take down the shadows a little bit and probably take up the highlight. I mean the blacks a little bit. Now the oranges in the coffee shop are way too intense, so we'll just selectively desaturate that by just brushing around like so. There we go. Really that makes the photo feel a lot less dirty for lack of a better word and brings more attention to the subject. That orange back there was a little bit too intense. We could even take it down some more. Wouldn't hurt. There we go. What we'll do is we can pull back the yellows a little bit. Generally just yellow is a Generally a pretty gross color in photos. Uh, it generally doesn't work. I like to desaturate my yellows a lot or shift my yellows towards an orange. So there we're getting closer. And <laughs> for, for you cheapos out there that don't wanna buy my presets, I, I guess you can copy these settings over here on the right, have at it. Um, you won't see the tone curve very well though. So that's kind of the secret sauce. Let's add in a little bit of grain as well. That adds more texture. And then here we can do our final, final light edits. So we'll do a final round of light painting. And what we'll do with this is we'll probably brighten the, oh, no, not that. So we'll brighten different aspects. If you, if you guys are getting into photography or, or, or pretty, into it already and you're not light painting your photos, uh, definitely consider it. It's, it's a way to really add a lot of contrast and contrast is what makes 
photos pop, what makes things interesting. But if you're lazy, you just come down here and crank the contrast slider and it's not going to put contrast in the right places. It's just going to add it generally. When you're light painting, what you're doing is you're essentially adding contrast. So I'm hitting various spots that make sense to have highlights with highlights and I'm hitting spots that make sense to have dark areas more dark. Uh, and like that, you have a lot more control on what gets emphasized and how much. So if you're not light painting, it is a very, very powerful tool in your arsenal. And you should consider uh, just learning how to do it. It takes a little second to just understand where light, like where would look good and where light painting looks good. Now I'm starting to look at it in here and this area is definitely a little bit too red. That's not a problem. Uh, with things that are minor color shifts like that, I use a pretty lazy technique and it's just make it a little bit colder and a little bit more green. And generally this works pretty well in that sense. Yeah. It's not perfect. We could also probably lighten it up a little bit and desaturate it. Let's lighten it and desaturate it a tiny bit. There we go. That's getting closer. Yeah, sweet. All right. Let me just one more. There we go. No. Let's see what else, what else, what else. Let us make the eyes a little bit more interesting. But what we're going to do here is we're going to lighten the eyes and the technical, I don't know if you want to call it industry term, is adding a catch light to the eyes, which basically means at the bottom or opposite of the light direction, you have a little bit of glow in your eyes. Um, and, and in this photo, it would be the bottom, like right two thirds here. Uh, if the light was coming from below, it would be up here. And this is also why you'd never want to brighten an eye like that, because that just looks demonic. So <laughs> what we'll do is the, the technique for this is essentially trying to create more of a half moon down there. So we'll, we'll take a, just an exposure brush, take the flow down to 10 and just slowly squiggle and paint. Squiggling to add texture because eyes aren't all consistently bright, there's flickers and lighter parts and darker parts. It's a little bit too much on this side. What we can do, see I'm, I'm, I'm mostly painting in this half moon bottom area, uh, but I am adding a little bit to the sides as well. Yeah, you don't wanna to go too intense with it because it can look kind of weird if you get too intense, but generally, as humans, we are drawn to other human eyes, and it's a very powerful thing to, to make the eyes a little bit more um, alluring, I guess, or a little bit more, um, pulls you in a little bit more. We can also come down here, probably take down the sharpness a little bit. It's just, yeah, it was really, really, in the radius. Details and just sharpness. There you go. I don't need to sharpen it too much. All right. Let's let's even up. Let's do a general brightening, a general lift of the eyes. Taking another brush, and just a general lift. And taking this one and taking up a little bit more. Let's see what that looks like. Let's also add a little bit of warmth in there because the scene is very warm. So you also probably want the light in the eyes to be warm as well. All right, and we are pretty much done. The, the last thing to do would be to maybe add a little bit of flair or dreaminess. And what I like to do in that respect is take this radial brush or this radial filter, I guess, not radial brush, and add just a tiny bit of exposure. Dehaze negative. Make sure this is ticked invert. And if you do this, move this big, like, radial brush and it softens as it goes out and if you dehaze minus it it makes this uh it gives it a little bit of a dreamy look uh don't do it to all your photos just do it to photos and in places where it makes sense there we go there we go 
And then the final thing we do is crop for Instagram. So four by five and down a little bit. There we go. Somewhere right there. There you go. This is where we started and this is where we ended up. I, I really like this change. As you can see, we really smoothed out the skin tones while maintaining the textures. And that's really the name of the game. Over here, there's just color differences. And this is <laughs> really <Wow>. intimate <laughs> of my face, guys. Uh, color differences, tone differences. This is, this is dark and this is light, this is light. And then all of a sudden, we even a lot of that out. And there you go. It's a pretty simple process, but it takes a little bit of time. You can see the before and after. It really did make a difference. I use that technique when I find a photo that I want to spend more time on. It's not for every single photo, but especially for portraits that I like and I want to give it that extra attention to really bring out as much as you can. So if you found it useful, drop a like, a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you guys want to pick up my presets, there's a link in the description below. That'll help you a lot with the color and contrast editing. And actually most of my stuff is housed on Instagram, so if you want to check that out, that's also in the comments below.